on the night of the 4th of August, 1789, in Versailles, in the National Assembly, in the first year of the French Revolution, a group of French nobles stood in the National Assembly and said, we propose the abolition of all feudal rights and duties. Well, the French Revolution was a revolution far more than a political one. And I think that the single most revolutionary act of the entire French Revolution was not the beheading of the king or the storming of the Bastille. It was what took place on the night of the 4th of August. It's almost as though the French National Assembly, led by these, ironically, revolutionary nobles, said, everything that we had assumed to be central to the social order last year is gone, legally, and it's been replaced by something utterly different. Prior to this, individuals had rights, but they didn't have rights as individuals. Now this might actually take a little bit of wrapping one's head around. A peasant had certain rights. He had the right to, say, fish in the local stream. He had the right to draw water from the local well. He had the right uh, to a pew, a family pew perhaps, in the local church. Uh, he had any, any number of rights, but he didn't have those rights because of who he was. He had rights, he had such rights because of the group to which he belonged. The same thing for even all the way up to the king. The king didn't have rights because he was Louis Bourbon or just some guy that happened to be born into the world. He had the rights because he sat on the throne. The king had rights in French society. It wasn't the individual that occupied the throne that had those rights, but it was the person who actually occupied the position of the monarchy that had those rights. You didn't have rights as individuals. And not only that, rights varied from place to place and from social stratum to social stratum, depending on how they had evolved uh, over the centuries, perhaps even over the millennia, and how they had come to be understood by everyone, uh, and how they had actually worked themselves out in practice in society. The night of the 4th of August changed all of that. The French National Assembly, Assembly simply said, that's gone forever, irrevocably, and now everybody is utterly equal in every way. That had never been done before in human society. The Romans didn't attempt it, the Greeks didn't attempt it, no society had ever actually attempted it. There had been some discussion of this sort of thing uh, in political circles throughout human history, but to my knowledge, the night of the 4th of August was uh, the first time that that had ever actually been attempted to put this sort of thing into law, I suppose. I don't know if you would call it law, but to actually just consciously dismantle society and replace it with something else. Looking back, we sort of think, well, that wasn't really that revolutionary thing, but that's only because we've all grown up in a society that assumes human equality, especially equality of rights. It's hard for us to understand that another culture another society simply might not see things that way. If you had spoken to a French peasant, say a hundred or a thousand years prior to the night of the 4th August 1789, and said, okay, um, now you are legal to everybody else on the planet. You are, uh, sorry, you are equal to everyone else on the planet, everyone else or at least within the borders of France. He wouldn't have understood what you were talking about. The idea would have seemed that bizarre to him. And not only that, it might have seemed repugnant. But you, you mean that me, a good Catholic peasant, I'm equal to the, the Protestants? Are you crazy? No, 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 absolutely out of the question. Um, or uh, or I, I live in this little village, and you're going to tell me that I should have the same rights as the people across the valley? You know, uh, why? We've always had different rights. We've always had reciprocal agreements with that village, but we were never actually equal to each other. We worked out that we get to fish in the... Uh, in the stream from say May to uh, July when there's more fish than you know any other time but they get it the rest of the year so at the end of the day it equals out it's just a reciprocal arrangement that kind of reciprocal arrangement was uh, basically French society or feudal society writ large there were no actual understood universal rights it was all simply uh, evolved rights and obligations that people had with each other on an individual basis, or at least as a member of a certain group or a certain corporation. Um, the church had certain rights, but individual churchmen didn't have certain rights. 
it's difficult for us to explain. It's difficult to get people to understand how that would have worked in, in terms of uh, uh, the day-to-day lives of people, and especially in, in terms of the way that people thought back then. But it's equally difficult to, have, to sort of teleport back and explain to them how we think. As I say, the night of the 4th of August was possibly, the night of the 4th of August, 1789, was the time when the modern age was created. It, uh, one is inclined to say that that's when it was born, but I almost say that the modern age was created, our, our culture, our concept of universal human rights. That idea had to be A, thought up, now this had happened before uh, the French Revolution by people that were considered utopian, ludicrously idealistic dreamers, um, but it had to be thought up, it had to be put into law by the French National Assembly, and it had to be sold to everybody. Now, that's important because, as I say, not only would the idea of universal human rights have been uh, incomprehensible to a lot of people prior to that, uh, even after it, it was considered repugnant. The idea that all people are equal, all men, all women, all humans, whatever, black or white, are equal. End of story. Now, the reason, again, why I bring this into this is a lot of people seem to think that human rights are just eternal, irrevocable, inherent absolutes. I'm not going to say that they're not, but we've got to understand the implications of just seeing them and taking rights as an article of faith. What you do when you do that in many ways is you weaken, if you ask me, um, the foundations of our rights culture. Because what you do is you just... One, one never has to make arguments anymore based on the existence of human rights, um, so you don't bother to do it anymore. But then you get people who will strut right up to that and say, you say human rights, individual rights exist, I say they don't. End of story. Now you have no answer to that. Once you have just said that human rights are just um, inherent in the human condition, individual rights. Um, and this actually did happen in human society. It was... Uh, modern, liberal, secular uh, society uh, was not prepared for the appearance of the totalitarians in the mid-20th uh, century because they simply said that. It had been assumed that we were gravitating towards or evolving towards a position of universal human rights, uh, their universal applicability throughout human society, and the totalitarians simply said no. Human rights don't exist. Only the nation, only the group, only the corporation, only the larger society, only the state have rights. And the people who believed in individual human rights were taken off guard by this. They had no answer. And a lot of people seem to think that that idea was defeated in the Second World War when we did say that, you know, the individual has rights, etc., etc. Well, it was militarily defeated, I suppose, but I, I'm not really so sure about whether or not it was psychologically defeated. Um, it's still just taken as an article of faith that we have universal, uh, inalienable human rights. I think that that's a dangerous idea or a dangerous tendency to just slip into the thinking that human rights just are. Because there are people out there that simply don't believe that um, human rights just are. Um, and throughout the bulk of human history, not only didn't people believe that human rights just are, they simply wouldn't have understood what on earth you were talking about if you had attempted to tell them that all human rights, all humans have inalienable rights that apply to them as individuals. The bulk of human history, the bulk of the experience of human society, says otherwise. Thank you.